Hi everyone. We are going to be talking on this code share problem today. It's suggested by Syed Sibli, and the name is Devu class. So this was in March, uh, the March contest, long contest, and the problem is such that you have Devu who's obsessed with having his class in order. The kind of order he wants is that the number of girls and number of boys should be around equal, and well, he wants all the boys and girls to sit next to each other. So there can't be a boy who's not sitting next to a girl. And similarly for the girl. So if you have a string input, then it's only going to consist of boys and girls. And what you need to output, this would be your input. What you really need to output is boys and girls sitting together. But you know, Devu would know this, so you don't need to output the string, you need to output something else, which is the cost of actually rearranging this string to this string. Alright, so the only kinds of operations that you're allowed when uh, rearranging the string is to make swaps. So you can swap from index i to j with a cost. So the cost function is given here. It's i minus j raised to power t. Right. So t will range between 0 to 2. But by the end of this discussion, you'll see that uh, t can be anywhere between 0 to infinity. So t any t greater than or equal to 0, and we'll have solved this problem. Important to know is that cost is defined by this function. And to make things simple, let's always assume that j is greater than i. You can you can swap the j and i if they are not. The j is greater than i and j minus i raised to power t is your cost function, right? So how do we do this? Firstly, we notice that if the number of boys are greater than the number of girls, then the difference can only be by a, f a count of one. Let's understand why. So we have this input string b b and we are going to output b g b g so there's another character here yeah so this is going to be output if you had another boy anywhere in the string then you can accommodate that you can put a boy at the end starts with a boy, ends with a boy, and so your output is still working. If you had an extra girl, that can also be accommodated. So this boy wouldn't exist and you would have an extra girl, you can put her in the front of this string. So what we are seeing is that if there is an extra boy or an extra girl, you can encapsulate the remaining class with two girls or two boys, whatever is extra, and you'll have a valid string. However, if you have another extra girl, then any position in which you place this extra girl is going to break this order. So that won't work. And with that, we have the first scenario. If the number of boys minus number of girls, the absolute values in their counts in this string is greater than one, then output impossible. So output in this question is minus one. If you if you output minus one, it's considered impossible to do. We have the first scenario out of our way. The second scenario. Let me just drop this off. If b minus g is equal to one, that means that there is just one extra girl or one extra boy here. In that scenario, you know what the string should start with. If there is an extra girl, then the string has to start with a girl. If there is a boy, it has to start with a boy. So config is known. Right? The configuration of the string, the arrangement of the string. If boys, if the number of boys is equal to the number of girls, meaning this is zero, 
In fact, we, let's write that down. It's a little more consistent. Boys is equal to the number of girls. Try both. By try both, I mean that you need to try both strings, starting with girls and starting with boys. Three conditions. We are pretty much done with understanding what the problem is. All right, then let's solve this. The second part of this problem is about understanding how the cost function behaves. So let's have this uh, cost function here. Cost of i comma j is defined by i. No, so we decided that j is going to be the large index. So j minus i raised to the power t. If t is equal to 0, we have cost given by 1. This is if t is equal to 0. If t is equal to 1, let's try and figure out what the cost will be. j minus i is what we have. However, this problem hasn't actually told us if we can make any intermediate swaps. So let's have j, let's have an intermediate index k, and let's have i. If you have this input string initially, you know, and you're going to be swapping this index with this index, i with j, and you have this intermediate index, k. Does it make sense to actually uh, swap i with k and then this k position with j? Well, if you think of it math mathematically, it will be j minus k, the total cost of this will be j minus k plus k minus i. So it doesn't make sense actually to do this swap because minus k and plus k cancel out and that still remains j minus i which is your initial cost. So you can make intermediate swaps but it doesn't make sense. It would be better if you just make that single swap and you're done with it. However, if let's get some space t is equal to 2, then you have j minus i raised to the power 2. Here it might make sense. The thing is, when you have a string and i, k and j, this is going to turn out, the costs are going to turn out to be j minus k the whole square plus k minus i the whole square. Let's try and understand. Uh, for an example, what will happen? If j is equal to 4 and you take k in between 2 with i equal to 0, what happens is j minus k is 2. So 2 square, which is 4, plus 2 minus 0, 2 square, which is 4, gives you 8. But for the initial operation, you would have had j minus i the whole square, which is 4 minus 0 the whole square, which is 16. So that's where you're actually making some savings with 8. What this means is that making intermediate swaps makes sense for i greater than, for t greater than 1. If you, you can say, uh, prove the same thing for t equal to 3 and anything greater than t, uh, any t greater than uh, 1. Intermediate swaps are going to make sense. But the thing is, we don't really care about what swaps were made. We care about the cost. Even if there is hypothetically infinite swaps, you don't really care. Because if the cost is defined, then we know what to do. So, what that means is that we need to find an efficient way to swap these indexes. What happens when you swap a position i with i plus 1? Position i with i plus 1 for any t let's say t equal to infinity also because let's say t is a really large number x huge number right i with i plus 1 is going to give you i plus 1 minus i which is 1 1 raised to the power any huge number is also going to give you 1 and writing's gone terrible here but this is equal to 1 what that means is that you can make 
lots of intermediary swaps as long as the difference in positions is just one. In turn, that means that you should make swaps only of adjacent positions. If j is equal to 3, then your i has to be equal to 2. And that's how we are going to solve this entire string. If, if you know, we have, we have to solve this index with this index, then we are going to first swap these two indexes, then these two, then these two, then these two, and finally these two. That's how we are going to actually perform this operation of a single swap for any t greater than 1. Right. An interesting thing happens here. The sum of all these swaps is equal to j minus i. And because the cost is 1, we can say the overall cost itself is into 1. So this is j minus i. So for t equal to 2, the cost is not j minus i, the whole square. It is in fact just j minus i. And generalizing, we have if t greater than 1, the cost is j minus i. All right. So we have defined the cost function really well now. And we know what to do. Let's jump to the problem. Imagine you have an input string of boys and girls. Okay, and this is the string that you want to make. Let's add an additional girl over here. And so the string that you want to make is girl, boy, girl, boy. Yeah. You need to start off with a girl, but you have a boy in the first index. Now, we'll notice just a few things here. First of all, if you swap a girl with a girl, it doesn't make sense. It's an identical string. You started off and you're ending exactly where you were, except that you actually paid some money. It was, there was a cost of that swap. Second thing to notice is that if you swap a girl with a boy, then you better swap that boy who's out of position. Okay. This boy is out of position and needs to be swapped with a girl. I'll just mark this as red. So this boy is out of position, needs to be swapped with a girl. If you go to the very first girl you can swap with, that's not going to be a good idea. The reason being, you swap this girl with this boy and now you have, now you have a string which is G, B, 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 G, 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 G. The problem is now this boy needs to be swapped again. And we just proved that it doesn't make sense to actually make intermediate swaps, to have a K intermediary index. This index became that intermediary K index for this boy. So this approach is not going to be correct. Even if it is, it's going to take too much computation time, so we're not going to look into it. Alright, you will make a swap with the opposite gender and with that person who is out of position. Alright, the person who is out of position and opposite gender, you can make a swap over there. Okay, so let's see who is out of position. Uh, these boys are out of position but they are the same gender. So you come here, you see that this girl is not out of position. You see that this girl is out of position. There should have been a boy here. So you can swap these two indexes. And that's it. That's just the general idea. And um, you know, once you have made this swap, then you can have a uh, index, a running index. So you start off from here. Once you have made this swap, you are guaranteed that up to this point, everything is fine. So you increment the index and you come here. Let's say i. i becomes 1. You come here, you see a boy is what you wanted, and you have a boy, no problems. Increment the index, you're going here, a boy is what you, what you wanted, and you got a girl. Now, we have already swapped these two indexes. So this is a girl, 
happen. This is a boy now. Alright, you came here. Oh, you came here. And you saw that you need a girl. So, the very first girl is in position. You go here. That girl is also in position. This is the girl that you want to swap with. I'm sorry. This boy is in position. I, I just want to kick him out. <laughs> uh, this is the boy that you want to swap with. And changing those two positions, we actually have the entire thing done, I think. Yeah. And then you increment the counter to, it keeps going up. So boy, boy, girl, girl, boy, boy. And you have the entire string uh, done. Everything is fine. This is the correct solution actually, except that this solution is not efficient enough. This problem requires an ON solution and what we have come up with is going to a particular index. So we are going to be visiting all indexes, which is an ON operation. And for each you know, index, we are going to be checking which is the next person who is of the opposite gender and out of position. So that itself is going to be another ON operation. So what we have is an N square algorithm. Not fast enough. Here we make use of this uh, clever data structure. It's called a list. Uh, what, what we can do is, initially when we have this input string, let, let's make that string again. So there were four boys, I think and five girls, right? So we have this input string and uh, well, what we want to do is we want to find out all the people of both genders who are out of position. So we come here, this boy is out of position. We store that in the boy list. Yeah, I'll just name this well. List of boys. We store position zero actually, so zero. One is in position, we come here. Two is out of position. We come here, three is in position. We go forward. Four is a girl who's out of position. So we have our second list which is girl. And that gives us four first. Or, or is it? Now, four is actually in position, yeah, because she's a girl and she's in the even index here. So, great. Four is not out of position. Five is out of position. And similarly, seven is out of position, yes. And this will be the end of the list. This is just a null pointer. So. These are two lists that you have and using these lists, you can convert this N square algorithm into an ON algorithm. How? Well, we come here. Let me just entirely get rid of this. We had boy, boy, four boys and five girls. Firstly, we come to index zero, we see that it's a boy. We need to swap the boy with a girl. The very first uh, girl here is at five. So we swap index zero with index five. But what we should really do is do something even more clever because you're going, going to be only swapping people who are out of position. You don't even need to run over this array, you know, one by one. You don't need I to be incrementing by one. I should be pointing here and the person that you're going to swap I with is going to be pointing here. Whichever one is smaller is the one that you'll go to. So let's go for zero because that is smaller than five. Zero and five will be swapped.
we have girl here now and boy. Now these two positions are going to be cancelled out. In fact, you know what, I'll use a different color here. 0 and 5 are out of these two lists. Now you come here again. 2 and 7 are the, the two numbers that you're going to compare with. 2 is smaller, so that will be your i. 7 is your j. We go to 2. 0, 1, 2. Right here. 2 needs to be solved with 7. So, where's 7? I think this is... 7 seems to be a really big number. Yeah. Seven, so. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Okay. 8. Alright. Let me just check for this again. Ah. Well, I've I solved the wrong index. I, I said something, I did something else. Uh, this is going to be a boy. Oh, no, this is going to be a girl. And this is a boy. Alright. So 0 got solved with 5. Now we realize that 2 needs to be solved with 7. So 7 is over here. This is coming out correctly. 2 becomes a girl because their positions are swapped. And here you have the end of the lists. Right. That's it. You have your correct string and you did this in, you know, when you were running through this uh, input to get, to make these lists, it was an ON operation. Finding out those people who are out of position is an ON operation because you're running through the list linearly. And uh, actually then running through these two lists is going to be a linear operation too because the number of elements that you're going to have at most in each list is n by 2. So n by 2 plus n, which is creating the list cost, the two list cost, is an on operation. And so debut class is solved in on. So thanks for watching. If you have any doubts or suggestions, you can leave them below. Uh, I'll also be sharing a link of the problem and also of the source code in the description. Uh, also, I'll be working on this uh, ACO, which is Ant Colony Optimization, next week. Uh, it's on this problem for Alice from CodeChef. Right? And a pretty interesting approach uh, for this problem. So, I'll see you then.